Hi everyone, Nigel Saunders here. It has been a busy last few days. I'll show you what I've been up to. I've sold the last of all my Saab parts. Uh, everything else can just go to the metal scrapyard now. So there's a bunch of window winders and trim and two really, really heavy doors off the Saab 900. So those can go to the scrapyard and that'll be it for the Saab parts. I was kind of sad because I had Saabs for like 10 years, but I did keep the grill off the Saab. I hung the grill in my tree here. I've got my old Alfa Romeo grill here. And there's the Saab grill up there too. This is my tree of grills, of automotive grills. So any money that I got from the Saab parts, I've already spent and I'll show you what I spent it on. I was doing my son's paper route this morning and it's the early bird that gets the worm. And out on someone's front lawn was this truck capper for sale. And the price was about a third of what you normally pay for a used truck cap. So I measured it up and it looked like it fit. So I went and bought it and we loaded it up on the truck and drove it home. And it was only like two blocks away. So it was kind of nice. So it has opening windows on the sides. The back hatch opens. It's off of a Dodge. It doesn't fit perfectly. You can see there's not a lot of overhang at the back here, but there's lots of support. Should be fine. So I've, uh, the clamps for it, he couldn't get them loose, so he kind of just bent the uh, bolts on it. So I've got new clamps on order from Canadian Tire. Uh, they'll be in this afternoon. It's curbside pickup. So yeah, it'll keep uh, everything nice and dry inside here. If I ever want to transport trees, bonsai trees in the truck, I can do that to shows in Kitchener. I can sleep in the back if I want. It'll be kind of handy. So I was happy to pick that up. The white color looks pretty good with the bumpers being white. and So kind of the Canadian color scheme, white and red. So that's my capper. So I still have to get some rubber strips to sit on top of the bed there. But uh, yeah, I'm hopefully, uh, you know, in a day or two, I'll have it all secured that I can drive it around with the cap on. I've already taken one load of sob parts, the scrap parts to the uh, metal recycle place. And I took a load of garbage to the dump. And on the way back, I filled the back with wood chips for my bonsai area. So I've got to distribute those today. The cleanup continues in the backyard, so you can see now I've got a pretty good laneway for the trucks to get back to the bonsai area to pour the cement pad. It's drying up nicely, but we are due for rain, I think, tonight. I've also finished the work on the roof up here, uh, putting the screening in and the foam to stop squirrels getting into the roof. So I finished that job. I have finished screwing the east trough up and I put a strainer up top to filter out all the stuff going down into the tanks here. So I can take the scaffolding down now. So that's another thing I can do today. A while back in the winter time, a songwriter named Leo Lafleur approached me to do a video for the song he had just written, which was called Bonsai Tree. So I've been doing that. I started yesterday filming shots. I put my three forests together here. And they look really awesome together. You can see, it just looks like an endless forest. Really cool. So I've been working on that. The area for the cement slab for the new greenhouse, the glass greenhouse is all cleared. Uh, we've been digging out some of the topsoil and moving it to the backyard. Uh, Laura planted all those raspberries I dug up and used the soil for that. And I've got to stake out the location of the pad, measure it out and put stakes in the ground. And that'll be all done, my part. Uh, then it's just up to the construction crew. My wife dug up that peach tree from our backyard. It just grew wild. And it is in flower and it's also leafing out here. So there's been lots of insects that are pollinating the flowers. And my wife has a paintbrush here that she's been also doing it. 
making sure we get peaches on the tree. So that'll be exciting. The weather is really warm today. T-shirt weather once again. So I moved some of my tropical trees out to the greenhouse here. Some of my ficus trees, my sarissa, the natal plum. Yeah. So you can see this one is a little sunburned. You can see the leaves kind of have a losing their color. However, the new shoots are growing in really strongly. So, you know, I'll lose those indoor leaves. Yeah, there's one that's kind of dark over here. This one seems to be okay. Now this one was in more of a sunny spot in the plant room. It was in the window, uh, right in the window. So it got a lot of direct sunlight. So it doesn't seem to be burned at all, this one, but this one, it was in the basement for a long time. And, but it's, it's doing fine. Here's an update on the Manitoba maple, that one that got damaged by the cold. So you can see that one leaf shriveled up. Uh, there's a bit of damage to another one under there. But basically, it came through pretty good. None of the other shoots are really damaged much. Oh, there's a leaf that's kind of stunted there. Oh, this one's got a little burn on it, but not too bad. You see the new leaves coming up are really good looking, really healthy. So that survived the frost quite well and the red maple here. The leaves are just opening up now, so it's doing quite well too. I did get a little burn on my oak tree here, my royal oaks. I was keeping them in the greenhouse and they were doing really well, like all the leaves look really healthy. And then I, uh, we got a really cold night and I forgot to bring it in. So the tips of the leaves got burned really badly. And up top you can see they're a little crispy. However, you know, they'll bud out again. You can see there's a set of buds up top and there'll be buds at the base of each one of these leaves. So it'll recover, I'm quite sure. It's funny that this one didn't get much damage and this one did. Eh, just different genetics, I guess, in the trees. The red maples here, they all opened up fine. There's a little bit of damage on the leaf there. You can see it curly at the edges, but pretty good for minus three degrees Celsius, three degrees below zero. Here's another one that got damaged up top, frost burn, but the leaves underneath look really good. So yeah, minor damage considering we were down to those low temperatures. My bird's nest spruce, you can see the buds swelling on it. Looking good. My birch tree here, the leaves are coming out. The American elms have leaves coming out all over. My Thuja forest that I planted here. So far everything's looking good. I can see the tips are ready to grow. So I don't think so far I haven't lost any of the trees in here yet. So that's good. My ginkgo here, this is the back of it, but you can see the green on the buds ready to burst open very soon. It's exciting. My native white pine, which I'm hoping to get repotted. The candles are starting to extend on it. So that's kind of exciting. Nothing much on the bald cypress yet. I'm hoping it's still alive. I think it is, but who knows? I've been keeping it warm. So I'm hoping it's still alive. And same with these uh, bay berries. I don't know. The candles on my Scots pine here are extending really well. Lots of growth. So I'm kind of letting it grow fairly long because I want to heal these wounds that I, I took off an elbow here and there's a big wound. I cut it down here, shorter. So yeah, I think, you know, Another year of good growth on this, and I think these wounds will be pretty well closed over. I was just looking at my Austrian pine, and on the needles here, you can see black bugs mating, and I can see deposits like, um, it looks like scale or something on the needles here. 
So that's gonna have to get the soap and water treatment. It's only on that one branch. Glad I noticed that, so. Looking at all the other branches, they look fine. So yeah, I better get the soap and water out. Now they actually look like those soft fly. Yeah, they look like little larva. I'm definitely gonna have to get rid of those. Yep. Okay, I'll get out the soap and water. I've got my bottle of soap and water. So it's 40 parts water to one part liquid dish soap. You know, the kind you do your dishes with. So I just spray it on the tree. So let's go do that now. Here they are, we'll see how they react. No reaction. Oh, now they are. They're starting to kind of move about a bit. But not dramatically. And they definitely don't like it. So I'll have to pick off whatever those blisters are on the needles. I'll have to scrape them off by hand and then respray it with soap and water. Um, I think I mentioned before that sometimes I get larvae inside these new candles or these new uh, growth tips on the branches. And yeah, the, the candle goes soft. You kind of gonna feel it and it goes soft and then inside is like this larva eating away all the inside. So I think that's what these are. So I'm glad I caught it before it spread to the rest of the tree. And everything else is looking good on it, but just that one branch. Yeah, it's definitely a larva. If you see my finger there, there's two of them there. And they look like they're dying. <laughs> yeah, they don't seem to... Yep. They can't handle that soap and water. All right, just give them another bit of a spray here and then I'll pick everything off, wash, spray it again and wash it down. The leaves are starting to come out on the Osage oranges. So that's exciting that they've survived. This will be their third year now. Really exciting. So the first year I just grew them in a seed tray. Second year I planted them as a forest. Third year, I'm starting to get some branching. So very exciting for the Osage orange forest. I've removed all the worms off the needles and those discolored patches, they're not blisters or anything. They're actually scars where they've been probably sucking sap out of the needles. So they, they can't be scraped off or anything. And I think it's quite safe now that I got rid of all the little insects. Just making sure there's no more. No, it looks like I got them all. So I'll keep my eyes out. You just never know, like when, you know, an adult insect can land and lay eggs on these things on your bonsai trees. So you gotta inspect them like at least twice a day. That's why, you know, it's good to hand water your trees and as you're watering them, make sure you check them over because you never know what you'll find. My bonsai thistle is doing all right. It's perking up after it's repotting. Now I'm going to see if I can kind of create a tree-like form with this thistle. Uh, they do get quite a thick woody trunk on them, so it'll be interesting to see what can happen. The repotting season is slowly coming to an end for uh, deciduous trees anyway. Uh, so I've got my beech here that I've got to repot. Uh, get it underway as a, you know, a bonsai rather than just a seedling in a pot. And I've also got all these, and I think there's Ammer maple, uh, red maple, and I think that's red maple too. And I think this is an ammer maple down here. So I want to separate those, get them into bonsai pots. Once again, Tom 
from the YouTube channel Grow and Clip Bone Size for Seniors has spoiled me. He sent me a bunch of pots, six pots, and these are larger than the ones, the smaller ones that I put all the large seedlings in. So that's a nice size pot to kind of, you know, get a tree underway as a bonsai. So I'm going to uh, be planting or repotting some trees into these pots today. So that'll be exciting. In the last few years, I've had a real problem with liverwort lately. And you can see it on the surface of my nightshade vine here. And it kind of covers the surface of the soil and water can't penetrate into the soil very easily. And they have roots that go down, you know, fairly far, like about 10 millimeters into the soil. So when you pull them out, it pulls a big clump of soil out with it. So I'm really beginning to dislike them. <laughs> So I, I picked all the liverwort out of this planting and I've replaced it with fresh bonsai soil on top. And I've, you know, I was reading up on liverwort. Um, definitely moist soil. Uh, you know, the spores land on the moist soil and it propagates. They don't like being dried out. So if you leave the surface of your soil to dry out a little more, you won't have as much problem with liverwort. I found too that if you plant moss on top of your planting, the liverwort seems to stay away. The moss kind of takes over, but not always. Um, so yeah, I, I've been really having a battle with liverwort lately. Uh, they say, you know, a dilute mixture of vinegar and water can help, you know, help uh, create an environment that they don't like. So I've just been picking it out manually. And, you know, when you pick it out, it takes a big chunk of soil with it. And then I replace it with fresh multi topsoil. So, I, I don't know, I may repot this one, my, my vine, my nightshade vine. I'm really liking it. And, yeah, I, I might repot it just to get rid of all the soil and the liverwort. When I pruned my ginkgo, I stuck all the cuttings in bonsai soil here and they're starting to get green tips on the buds but that doesn't mean that they'll root and it just means they may come out into leaf and then the leaves will dry up and fade away but you know it's worth a shot I've got a mixture of different size cuttings I got big ones small ones so I'm hoping at least a couple take that'd be nice I'll have to leave the filming of the bonsai trees for the bonsai tree song for later so I can clear off my table here and begin some repotting work. Here's my lineup of trees that I want to repot today. So I've got my silver maple forest. You can see the leaves are coming out on those. Uh, my elm, and I don't know what kind of elm it is. I know it's not an American elm. I'm thinking it's maybe a rock elm is my guess because I do have a rock elm in the backyard. A red maple here. Pot's a little small for it. Uh, my ammer maples and some red maples and the beach there. There's some birds over in the pond there. They love having a bath in there. There's so many animals use this pond. I see squirrels drinking from it. Tons of birds have bird baths in it. Amazing. Yeah, so that's the lineup for today. One, two, three, four, five, six pots. Oh, and my locust back here, my black locust. You see, it's just starting to bud out. So six pots, six new pots from Tom, six trees. Let's get at it. <laughs> 